Lord, I pray now that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts might be acceptable unto you. For you are truly our rock and our redeemer. We pray this all in Christ's holy name. Amen. So we are now in Easter tide, which means that it is Easter season. Um, many folks think that Easter is just one day, but it is not. It is a, a time and season in the Christian calendar that we uh, celebrate the resurrection. And um, if you will notice, most of the scripture verses are about Jesus revealing himself again um, after the death and uh, the burial and now in, in that resurrection season, he is, is going about kind of revealing himself to the disciples again and saying, hey, guess what? I still live. I'm, I'm good. Um, I know uh, last week was not a resurrection verse, but that's okay. I, I forgive the pastor who, uh, who preached that sermon. No, I'm, just, I'm kidding. Garrett, Garrett's here, by the way. Um, but I think he did a phenomenal job in, in really telling the story. I got a lot to live up to now. You know, in our current context, as we think about Jesus revealing God's self to, to the disciples and to us in this season of faith, I think about identity, right? And, and who we are in Christ, who we are as Christians, as disciples, as those who are followers of Jesus, because it means something different on the other side of the resurrection, doesn't it? I mean, we see the disciples as they traveled with Jesus, as they learned the lessons, and they, they were there during his ministry. And I'm sure that they, they had a, a sense of identity in, in that call of, of walking with Jesus. But as we get to the end of the story, or I say the end, not really the end, but the, the, the story where Jesus is now in the passion, is about to die, and he is constantly re, you know, um, telling the disciples about what's going to happen, I'm sure that in their mind things are changing. I mean, there's fear, there's anxiety, um, they don't know that uh, even though he's telling them that he's going to be resurrected, they don't understand what that means. And then on the other side of the resurrection, now, who are we as, as believers of Christ? This person who, who first did a ministry, who healed the sick and was, you know, helped the poor and, and fought against the, the powers that be and then ultimately uh, died and is now resurrected and, and comes back and, and says, hey, listen, I, I need you to continue to carry on that mission. I'm sure that was really probably very tough for the, the, the early disciples. In, in our current context, it's identity is a, is a weird thing, isn't it? I mean, if we think about, you know, if you receive an email from me that asks you to buy some gift cards and to send them to a certain address, please know that is not me. <laughs> That's not who I am. I don't, I'm not asking y'all for gift cards, okay? <laughs> Identity theft is real in our current context, isn't it? I mean, people steal our, our social security numbers and our, our, um, our identity online and it is very tough to work through. I know that some people have had some real, real challenges with that. And yet, in the midst of, of, of a time where identity theft is a real problem, oftentimes we, we give our identity away. And what I mean by that is that we act out of character. We change who we are. We forget who we are in order to either assimilate to a certain group of people or to fit in or to become something different than we are. We have an identity crisis. And the, the question then becomes for us, is it who are we? Who are you? How do you identify? And I'm not talking just about your, you know, your status, but I'm talking about as a, as a person who 
is called to be a disciple of God, how do you identify yourself as that person and in that being? The story today reminds us of Jesus who then reappears to the disciples as they are out fishing. Now, the disciples, this story is reminiscent of the call story of Peter and the rest as they were on the boat when Jesus called them. And I'm sure for them, their identity was wrapped up in being fishermen. They knew their trade. They knew who they were. They did this work on a daily basis. They were masters at this trade. And the story just before the pericope that I chose for today is a story where Jesus now is on the shore as Peter and the other disciples have gone out to fish for the evening. And what they have found is that they are unable to catch anything. And then they look to the shore and there's Jesus, but they didn't know it was Jesus. And he is doing what I can only describe as the first church fish fry. I mean, like it's legit, right? I mean, he's got a bag of fish, he's cooking it up. They're looking from the boat, they're like, oh. And he says, hey, out there, did y'all catch any fish? And they're like, no. And he's like, throw your net on the right side of the boat. I just went left, didn't I? Throw your <laughs> net on the right side of the boat. And so they do. And, and then all of a sudden, this swath of fish come in, and it's almost too heavy that the net can't handle it. They're hauling in the net. And then all of a sudden, Peter is like, wait a minute. Is that, is that you, Jesus? And it says he puts on some clothes. I don't know why he was naked. <laughs> and he jumps. I mean, if you're going to jump in the water, it seems like you'd be taking clothes off. But yeah, he puts some clothes on. He jumps in the water. He swims to shore and has this um, conversation with Jesus. And all the while, I believe it, it's wrapped up really in identity. It, it's wrapped up in identity. See, if you think back all the way to the call story of Peter, he was there on the fishing boat just like this story. Jesus calls to them and says, come and, and follow me and I'll make you a fisher of people. I'll make you a fisher of men. And Peter, as much as he is beloved... Peter is typically the one who is getting it all messed up and, and mixed up. And if we remember correctly, Peter is the one who told Jesus, no, you're not going to wash my feet, wash my whole body. And Jesus is like, dude, I don't need to wash your whole body. He's the one who, who has, has trouble with hearing the news that Jesus is going to die. And he says, no, Jesus, you're not going to die. And, and, and Jesus says, well, you don't know the story. You, you, you don't understand the things of God. You understand the things of human beings. Get behind me, Satan. Peter is the one who, in the garden, draws his sword and cuts the ear of the soldier. And Jesus is like, calm down, Peter. In as much as Peter gets it wrong, in as much as Peter always is challenging and pushing back and, and as impetuous as Peter is, Jesus loves Peter. And Peter, if we are reminded in those final days of Jesus as before he goes to the cross, denies Jesus three times. No, I am not his disciple. I don't know him. I don't know this man. Peter has an identity crisis, if you will, struggling with who he was as a fisherman and who he is called to be in Christ, forgetting that not only he loves Jesus, has walked with him, has been his disciple, but also that it, he is a beloved 
child of God for who he is. I wonder how many of us forget that we are beloved child's children of God for who we are. That we are called just as we are to be the disciples of Jesus Christ in our very manifold ways to serve God from our own perspectives. I had this challenge in my own faith as I went to answer my call. Okay. As I was being called and, and answering and fulfilling my call, I, I said, no, Lord, I'm not going into the ministry because I still got some things to work out. You know what I'm saying? I'm not holy by any stretch of the imagination. And Lord, you want me to go speak to your people. You want me to lead your people. You want me to, 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 to herd people into the kingdom of God. I am not that guy. And it, 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 was, it was difficult for me to think about being called as the person that I am. Lord, I got tattoos. Lord, I got earrings. Let's, let's face it, some people don't, don't like that. Every now and then I might use an expletive. But I'm real. And what I realized in walking into my call is that God doesn't call the equipped. God equips the called. And so as we look at the story of Peter, we see someone who was called out of his, his, his story of being a fisherman to being a fisher of men. I think the beauty in this story uh, in the pericope is that, that Peter and the others who were there on the boat don't even realize that they have gone back to their old ways, that they have gotten in the boat in the middle of the night, they, they are going fishing and realize, like, these are people who were trained fishermen. They didn't catch a thing. And then when Jesus appears and they listen to him, all of a sudden, the boat fills up with fish. That somehow, some way, Jesus re-identified them as children of God. They re-identified themselves as fishers of men, re-identified themselves and reconnected themselves as the family of God once again and, 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 and the blessings that came out of that. And so we find Peter in this moment of uh, crisis of identity being reminded of who he is by Jesus. It says, when they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of God, do you love me more than these? And this first question about Peter's love for Jesus harkens back to the questions that Peter would receive just before Jesus' death. Do you know this man? And his first denial no, I do not. His first outward action in his identity crisis, that he had forgotten that he loved Jesus and that he was beloved by Jesus. And now in this moment being tested or asked again, although I don't believe Jesus is actually testing him, I believe Jesus is just reminding him of who he is. And he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. You know that you were called, Peter. You know that God loves you. And I know now that you love me as well. And as a called disciple, you have been given a task to feed God's people to lead God's people, to be actively engaged in ministry like when I was alive and with you. I'm asking you to continue on in that mission. 
And then he asked again, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And again, each question puts more specificity on exactly who Peter is. First, do you love me more than these as a group, as a collective? Do you love me as the disciple who loves me more than this other group of, of people? Do you love, the second question, do you love, or he says, son of John, identifying him in his lineage, do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He says, tend my sheep. Being reminded of who you are, remind, be reminded also of your mission. And the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Now, I know Peter had to be very frustrated being asked that question three times. And again, it's still a reflection of the fact that he had denied Jesus three times. I think in psychology, there's a, there's a premise for this. You know, when you ask someone how you're doing, the first time you might get that surface level, yeah, I'm okay, everything's good. The second time you ask the question, is, it goes a little bit deeper, doesn't it? And, and they begin to reflect, how are you doing? Well, you know, things could be better. And the third time you ask, now they really are reflecting. They get a little bit deeper and they might actually give you the truthful answer. Well, you know, my life is falling apart right now. I feel like things are just going crazy. You got an hour to spend to talk to me? Because you shouldn't have asked me that question. This diving deeper gets to the root, the source of who Peter is. He is a beloved child of God who loves Jesus Christ and is one who will be, found, be called the foundation of the church in all of his frailty, in all of his brokenness, in all of the times that he was asking all of the questions and, and falling when all other things were going on, he's the one disciple who even in the midst of all of that, God loved and God used to be the foundation of the church. On this rock, I will build my church. Peter is the rock and the foundation of the church and he is perfectly imperfect just like us but sometimes we forget sometimes we allow the world to draw our identity into other places sometimes we decide to walk in the other direction we decide to forget that we are beloved children of God and that we love Jesus Christ and therefore are called to carry out the mission of God in the world. If we, like Peter, love Jesus, then we are called, like Peter, to tend God's sheep, to do the work of ministry, to be our authentic selves, to do what God calls and be fishers of people. The story goes on to tell us that in this moment, verse 18, very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and you would go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you would stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you, don't not, where you do not wish to go. Spoiler alert. He said this 
to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. Peter is finding his identity. He is being rejoined to community. He is being reconnected to being a disciple of God in this very moment. And he's even getting a prelude to his own death, which is a glorification of God in him. And after he said this to him, Jesus said, follow me. Again, a reflection all the way back to that call of Peter some three or four years before. When he had changed his life, when he was no longer just a fisherman, when he found that he was loved by God and that he did love God so much that he would walk alongside our Savior, watch him be punished, die, and resurrected. How many of us today are struggling with our own identity in Christ? How many of us are letting ourselves go into the ether, into the world, being changed by circumstances around us, by the politics of our day, by the challenges that we face? How many of us have forgotten that we are beloved children of God and that we, with our own hearts, love Jesus in such a way that we are called into ministry. Not everybody's called to preach. Not everybody's called to do the, the work of the church in this way like I do, but we are all called by God to do something. And we're all called by God to do something from our own location as who we are with all of our frailties, all of our brokenness, all of our changes, our challenges. And that is, that's really the whole message. That Easter is a resurrection season that not only celebrates the resurrection of Jesus, but celebrates our resurrection in him. I pray today that if you know yourself to be loved by Jesus, if you know yourself to love Jesus, then tend his sheep. Do the work. Walk the path just as you are. I had one situation back in Vegas. I happened to be visiting, or I had our kids visiting. They wanted to go down to a casino. I know. Don't admit that on tape, Pastor. And as we're at the casino, we're hanging out, and the kids are playing slots and doing whatever, and I happened to sit at the bar, and there's a young lady sitting at the bar there. And I have a conversation with her. The bartender doesn't even want to talk to me. He doesn't want to come up. He doesn't want to serve me. But as the conversation goes on, I find out that she's going through some really tough times in her life. She's struggling. She's living on the street. And as the conversation continues, I, I realize she needs help. And so I begin to talk to her about getting off the street. I begin to talk to her about food resources. I begin to talk to her about help. And I give her a business card. I tell her to contact me if she really is about getting off the street. And she has a couple of tears roll down her eyes before the security guards come rolling in and they, they walk her out. You can't be in here. And as she leaves, the bartender turns to me and he says, 
What are you doing with that lady? Don't you know she's a prostitute? And I said, no, I didn't know she was a prostitute, but I know that she was somebody who was in need. And as I explained to him that I was a pastor and that I was actually giving her resources to get off the street, that she could be in a safe place, that she could have some food, and that she could actually not have to live this lifestyle anymore. The bartender himself came to tears. He's, he said, I didn't realize that pastors actually came into a bar or a casino for that matter. In order to find the least, the lost, and the forgotten, we have to go where the least, the lost, and the forgotten are. And we have to realize that God calls us in our unique abilities to transform lives in places that other people will not go, cannot go. Peter realizes this now, I think. As he becomes the foundation of the church, he has found his identity in Christ. And each and every one of us has a special gift, talent, and ability in Christ. And we have the ability to change and transform the world through God's gift of grace. If you are God's people, tend God's sheep. Let us pray. Oh, blessed and gracious Savior, we give you thanks for calling us into your ministry, the ministry of your church in all of our unique ways, to touch lives and to help those who are in distress, to reach the least, the lost, the forgotten. It is only through your gift of grace and power that we are able to do this. And so, God, we ask that we, you help us to find our identity in you, that we might continue to transform the world through your love and grace. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.